I, female 26, went on a family trip with my in-laws two weeks ago. Mother-in-law always thought I was a bit ignorant and backward and that just because I come from a lower class family compared to hers, I have no etiquette. After we arrived at the hotel, they arranged to visit a fancy restaurant for dinner. My husband avoided telling me and I learned it last minute after he'd already gotten dressed. I asked where he was going and he said he and family were going to eat out, but I wasn't invited because his mom assumed that since I wouldn't be familiar with the food and how to eat it there at the restaurant, then I should stay in and eat at the hotel. I didn't argue, I just let him go, then packed and took the first flight home. He returned to the hotel, freaked out, and called many times, and when he found out that I'd gone home, he blew up and called me ridiculous and irrational to do this. He even said that I acted ungratefully and embarrassed him in front of his family after he begged to have me go on the trip. We argued, and he started giving me the silent treatment after he came home. Moreover, his family indirectly criticizes me on Facebook for what I did. Did I overreact? Am I the idiot for going home after my in-laws excluded me from dinner at a restaurant? Edit, he didn't even mention what type of food they ordered. The family didn't plan on having me come along, but my husband, like he said, begged them to invite me. This isn't just with me. My brother-in-law's girlfriend wasn't invited as well. They paid for my expenses, so I didn't want to act like I was being needy or something. What the heck did I just read? The only response should be, not the idiot. Your husband is a massive idiot for not standing up for you for going behind your back to a meal and in a group vacation, for being surprised and upset that you left that vacation to go home and is now giving you the silent treatment. Honey, I've never said this to a post, as it is just a snapshot of a relationship, but this relationship is toxic. You need to leave and not look back. He is never going to support you or choose you over his family. What the heck? You are so low class you can't eat at a nice restaurant. What does that even mean? Run, run, run. The whole proper fork situation was dreamed up by middle-class new money to try and feel exclusive and elite. Aristos have poor people chew the food and place it in their mouths like baby birds because they screw those middle-class people thinking they have the right to swallow nutrition. The irony is that your in-laws' boorish behavior of excluding you in such a way and for such extreme lame classist reasons is probably the lowest class thing they could do. Also, I hope this gets said a lot in these comments. You definitely have an SO problem. He should have shut down that garbage when it started spewing from their mouths. OP, you need a new husband. His family is toxic and he should have stuck up for you. Either you both go or neither. He didn't just not stand by you. He actively participated in excluding you. I hope you don't plan on having children in this family. Will they be second class in the family or just you? I always think of the scene in Pretty Woman where she doesn't know what utensil to use to eat escargot, and the rich oil tycoon or whatever sees she's out of her depth and shows her it's cool to eat them with her hands. People with real class will show you the ropes and be excited to share new experiences with their kid's partner. Not only would I have gone home, once there I would have packed up my stuff, got divorce papers and left. He is not worth staying married to, and his entire family are monsters. For some reason, my female 32 sister, 23, and her fiancé, 25, decided that the best way to celebrate before getting married was to have a joint bachelor and bachelorette party at strip clubs. They also hired a bus limo for the evening. The aftermath was, thus far, three breakups, four people dropping out of the wedding party, one impending divorce, and one arrest. The cleaning bill for the limo was also more than the original rental fee. She was crying to our mom at dinner the other day, and I snorted. I tried not to. I honestly did. I was trying my best just to keep my mouth shut. She asked me what was so funny. I said I wasn't sure what she expected to happen to get a group of people intoxicated, using illicit substances, and watching exotic dancers. She said that I was an idiot for judging her and her friends. I said I wasn't judging, just that literally anyone could have seen that outcome. My mom told me to apologize because my sister is having to replace most of her wedding party on the fly. I did apologize, but I still think I'm right. Am I the idiot for asking my sister what she expected to happen at a crazy show of a bachelorette party? I don't really care about the am I the idiot part. I want to hear more about this night that ended in three breakups, one possible divorce, four dropouts of weddings, and one arrest. 
<laughs> That's kind of unique in the history of trashy bachelorette parties. My God, please share more. I'll give the tamest example. My cousin is a talented singer. She's single and was supposed to sing a song during the ceremony. However, she hooked up with the maid of honor, who nobody knew had that in her, including her boyfriend. This happened in the limo bus. Boyfriend got arrested for trying to break into the bus while this was going on, and several people were cheering them on after locking him out. The other bridesmaid, who's married, cheated with two of the groomsmen. Her husband has left her because I guess this isn't the first time. I stayed primarily sober and stayed with my sister all night so she could party and not do anything too stupid. That's the tea, mist. The tea is piping hot. I legit wish a documentary crew had followed. I would watch two seasons of this. There's also a weird fervor in needing to have X number of bridesmaids. The sister's stress in needing to replace them overshadows the chaos of the breakups, divorce, and arrest. 100% of this outcome would have been predictable based on knowing the wedding party beforehand. Also, come on, it's an epic outcome. People may not agree with me, but I feel like everyone's the idiot here, except your sister, unless she was one of the cheaters. I've been to many bachelorettes. Cheating is a choice. Even when a couple of people got trashed, everyone still ensured the bride or groom had a good time. Your sister can ask for whatever kind of party she wants, and if anyone goes overboard, that's on them. And then you totally didn't try to keep your snort or scoff in. You wanted to state your opinion, and you were judgmental and blamed her for these other idiot people. If anything, you should have been more supportive and talked about how these people don't seem like good influences or people she should keep close to her. Yeah, like unless you hate your sister, it's sort of normal to be upset that your friend group is in disarray and it's bleeding into your wedding because everyone went bonkers on what was supposed to be a fun night that everyone agreed to. OP, you can be an idiot while still being right. The situation was clearly a disaster waiting to happen, but you seem a bit like you're gloating and reveling in the drama. Update, the bus and limo came out as the worst victim in this whole debacle. It needs a major cleanup and maybe some upholstery replaced. My dad is paying and he's angry. After reading the comments, I went to see my sister this morning and sincerely apologized. She asked me to be the matron of honor and I accepted. We still need someone to sing the rose during the ceremony since my cousin is persona non grata. I only know about the breakups from hearsay, but suffice it to say that getting a group of friends who have a lot of intimate history together and giving them unlimited alcohol and then taking them out to a club is a terrific idea if you are not getting married in a week. I'm an artist. The majority of my income is tabling at conventions like Comic-Con. I work hard, not to toot my own horn, but I'm skilled and invested a lot of time and money, and that rewards me with a good income and a cool job. My niece is starting to draw, mostly anime characters. She has an iPad and a program I use because she wants to be like me, and that's cool. Not to be an idiot, but she's learning. Don't get me wrong, she's better than most kids her age and practice will help. I'm excited to see her improve as she's only been doing it a few months. But right now, it's lacking. If I didn't know her, I would think it was bad. She's a kid, that's mean. Unfortunately, it's relevant. Scene, big convention, my biggest moneymaker, highest stress event on my calendar. Long days, long weekends, high cost, high reward. My niece loves anime, so the family is going too. The week before I get a call, they've made prints of my niece's art and want to put them on my table. I said they could have a little space. On day one, they left her with me to be a little helper. She stood in front of my table directing people to her prints. I lost a lot of sales. People wanted to look at her art and coo at the adorable child, but that resulted in people blocking my table. On day two, I said I wouldn't babysit. I had a table to run. Her parents stayed. Much worse. They blocked the table and accosted anyone who came up, interrupting people buying from me to talk about my niece. I was stressed and tired. I'm ashamed I barely stood up for myself. Every time I tried, I was told off. I had a panic attack all Saturday as my aunt and uncle grabbed away potential customers. On day three, they left. My niece was overwhelmed. Her parents were mad at me. Day three was slow, but I made the most money, so yeah, glad they weren't there. Usually, I make three months' rent at this con. Footfall and hype were high. I barely broke even. Part of the issue is there's no way she would get into these conventions alone. Most of the ones I attend require a portfolio to apply, and she definitely wouldn't qualify, so they can't just get her her own table. But they want to bring her to the next one. Take more table space, 
More merch. She sold a dozen prints and I'm proud of her for that, but events can cost thousands and I can't afford to finance her. I put my foot down. If this was another job, you couldn't force a take your niece to work day because art is a hobby. They've pushed the boundary. They argue I should be a role model. I'm jealous of the attention. I'm afraid of the competition. I'm selfish for thinking I'm better, etc. I got angry and said, yes, my art is better. It's my income. It's good enough to sell. They said she needed me, as she wouldn't be accepted if she applied to cons herself. I said there was a reason for that. It was mean, but also literally true. This is my job. I won't compromise it. So get a real job. She could do art fairs, easier stuff. I offered to take her to small events, but that enraged them. How dare I gatekeep? I'm not her parents' ticket to her fame and fortune. They bring out my follower account and think I should leverage it for her benefit too. But that puts a major dip in my engagement. Family thinks I'm the idiot. Am I? Not the idiot. It's your income. If you can't survive, you're no inspiration to anyone. Let them set up and pay for her own table and experience the boring side of the industry. They're messing over your livelihood. That's not acceptable, and if they do it a second time, it could mean you end up homeless. You've basically taken a massive pay cut this year to let their child cosplay as a commercial artist. The absolute entitlement of them. They can book and pay for their own table. They can learn the real cost of selling. Honestly, I'd send them a bill for half the cost of the table. Stop trying to cling to these relationships. Your sister is awful, her husband is awful, and that kid isn't going to turn out well either. Go ahead and make them angry. They don't want to accept that you had to work your way up, so your niece will have to as well as her art improves. OP, learn to grow a spine. You gave up two days of earnings because you didn't stand up for yourself. Even posting here if you're the bad guy in this situation is weak. You couldn't tell a kid on the first day to sit down and get out of the way. You just let her stand there presenting her artwork the entire day. As soon as you saw you lost your first potential customer, you should have done something. You don't have to insult your niece at all. Just draw the line that this is your job. You don't have to justify your job. Don't invite them to the next one. If they show up and won't listen, then call security to remove them from your table so they get the message. I have my son 50% of the time. It's what my ex wanted so he didn't have to pay child support. We live in the same neighborhood, so it isn't really a big deal. Our houses are only 10 blocks apart. My ex has remarried and has a stepson two years younger than our son, but about the same size. The problem is that my son has been coming home wearing clothes that are a bit more suited to a younger boy. When his clothes get dirty, instead of washing them or giving them back to me dirty, they dress him in his stepbrother's clothes. I was nice and I would wash them, send them back and dress my son in his clothes. After a few months of this, I gave up. He wore his brand new Minecraft t-shirt over and came home with a plain t-shirt. I went over and asked for all of my son's clothes that they had. I waited while they collected everything. They brought it out to my car and said I was being an idiot because they're brothers and it's normal to share clothes. I started sending my son there only in his ratty clothes. Torn jeans, stained shirts, that sort of thing. Now they're mad because it looks like they're poor and they have to buy him clothes. Since he has 50% custody, he's supposed to be doing that anyways. My son is happier because he has nice clothes here and there now. Not the idiot. I've seen this so many times, both in my friends' families and when I did family law work. Parent A buys the child clothes and parent B keeps them and sends the child back with beat up clothes. Sometimes parent B deliberately keeps the nicest stuff so the child looks good when parent B takes them places and parent A has to buy more or be one-upped. Parent B never buys clothes for the child, despite an equal obligation, and relies on parent A to supply everything. This particularly happens when the child outgrows winter outerwear and needs boots, coats and snow pants. You are under no obligation to send your child in nice clothes or contribute to the wardrobe of his stepbrother. A lot of not great co-parenting situations tend to end up with kids having separate wardrobes for each house because one mooches or is untrustworthy. It's not particularly normal for siblings two years apart to share an entire wardrobe of clothes. If they want the kids to share clothes, then that clothing should be supplied by them, not you. They were being cheap to their kids and using you. Fight fire with fire. Good going, Mom. You have your son's back and he knows it. I lost my wife, Lana, 20 years ago after the birth of our son. Lana and I were childhood sweethearts who saw ourselves growing old together. 
She was my everything. But during her pregnancy, they discovered she had cancer, and because she was already terminal, she dedicated the final months of her life to giving birth to a healthy son and ensuring he and I would be okay. She died hours after he was born. I always knew I would also consider myself married until I passed away. This was difficult for my family to understand. I was 26. They felt like I was young enough to bounce back fast, remarry, and continue life with a new family and love, but that never held any interest for me. I've never taken off my wedding ring. I've been asked out over the years, and I always say no, and if pushed, that I'm married, and people rarely ask questions. Over the years, my family has introduced me to women who they think could be the one to change my mind. It's something we've disagreed over. They even asked my son if he wouldn't like a new mommy when he was little, resulting in no contact for a while. They eventually apologized. My sister and her husband celebrated 30 years of marriage last month, and they threw a party with family and friends. My sister invited a friend of hers who I'd never met. She started talking to me during the party and mentioned that my sister said we would be perfect for each other and that she was excited for us to spend time together after the party. I asked her what she meant by that and she said we were going out to dinner, just the two of us, right after. I told her I never agreed to that and then told her I was married. She got the idea that I was divorced. I told her my wife had passed away many years ago, but I still considered myself married. She was shocked and afterward my sister was angry at me. She told me I had made her out to be a liar and her friend was hurt that she tried to set her up with someone who was so hung up on someone else. I told her I had made it perfectly clear I would not be dating and that she was the one who gave her friend the impression I wanted to date. She told me telling people I'm married when I'm not anymore is wrong, pushing people away and giving them the wrong idea. I left early because she wasn't willing to let it go. Afterward, my brother-in-law said my sister meant well and I have to understand where the concern comes from because even though I found my own happiness, it's not how my family wanted me to be and they worry even more now my son's in college. Am I the idiot? I'm a widow. It's only been four years. My mom was widowed twice. My first dad died while she was pregnant with me. Mom told me we stayed married in our hearts, souls and minds. I found that no one understands that. I do. You are not the idiot all the way. It's nobody's business how long it's been. You are married. Period. If no one understands, too bad for them. Time is relative. Four years later, it feels like I just found his body again and again. Take care. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. Your wife must have been as amazing as you. Be strong. Your sister is a huge one, as is the rest of your fam who messed with your son over this. Are they trying to imply you'll be lonely? Even if that were true, again, not their damn business. Not even if eventually you change your mind. Especially if you do, that isn't their business. And then trying to force it is rude. Condescending, meddling, patronizing, and crosses several lines and boundaries, which you seem to have been extremely clear about. I won't judge you if you go no contact with your sister and her dumb boyfriend. I know they're married, but his comment is dumb boyfriend material. Your family needs to accept your choice.